Ten mm -hmm. things about baddies in films that I find annoying. At number ten, in Die Hard, who's seen a Die Hard movie? Yeah. Yes. The villain always plans in meticulous detail a mega heist, leaving no stone unturned, but he's never heard of John McCain, <laughs> who's always in that self-same bus. <laughs> okay? That is annoying. In Charles Dickens, you never have to work out whether the character's good or bad because they have names like Mad Jack McMad, <laughs> uh, Edmund Child Slayer, <laughs> or Janet Cranky. <laughs> he copied this device from Star Wars where it's the same thing. That's annoying. Um, since 9-11, the FBI don't even speculate that any baddie might be Al-Qaeda. They're just not. <laughs> Okay? They're not even Arab. <laughs> They're definitely not Saudi. <laughs> okay? That, how about that? In Star Trek, the villain is always followed around by this noise. I can't do it very well, but it goes... Ah, <laughs> when he comes into the room. And Kirk still trusts him for the first 20 minutes. That is annoying. <laughs> Number six most annoying things about baddies. In James Bond, I don't know if you know this, the baddie is always based on every teenage boy's view of his father. Oh, okay? Right. He's, he's stubborn, um, he's megalomaniacal, he's older, uh, he wants to run the entire house world. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and he's always waiting patiently for Bond to come home a bit late. <laughs> and says, I have been expecting you, Wayne. You know, so that's the <laughs> psychology of that, and it's right. so obvious to me. Mel Gibson movies, mm. the villains are always blue-blooded English soldiers, like in Braveheart, it was an effeminate English king, yeah. you know, in a red mm. coat and all this powdered wig. In The Patriot, it was a foppish English general, you know, and in The Passion of the Christ, apparently he wanted Prince Harry handing out the nails <laughs> just to sort of <laughs> keep the thing consistent. <laughs> In westerns, the baddies always wear a handkerchief knotted at the back yeah. so that they're ready to pull it up over their faces. Okay, that's they how you do. can spot them. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed this when I was about five and I felt like writing to somebody. <laughs> Say, you know if a cowboy's good or bad, because if he's good, his handkerchief is knotted at the front and it yeah. hangs down his back. Uh. But if he's a baddie, it's turned around the other way, ready. It's for every <laughs> At number three, in superhero films, the villains have always suffered loss of family members, cruelty, etc., so they're evil. Mm. The hero has also suffered loss of family members, cruelty, that kind of thing, but he has never been attacked with acid, and so he has a good look about him, and so he's the hero, <laughs> and that's annoying. Number two, in science fiction, the aliens are millions of years more advanced than us, but they always forget to bargain for the indomitable human spirit. <laughs> capacity for selfless love, etc., etc., which ends up overturning their might. And one question I've always wondered, if they're so technologically advanced, these alien nations, right, how come their cosmetic surgery industry lags behind? <laughs> huh? good point. They're never good-looking, are they? They never look like Piers Brosnan. They always look like, you know... Well, he's got five ears. They always look like an alligator's arse. <laughs> Um, and this is the thing that annoys me most about about um, baddies, especially in American films now. When you have these mega bank heists in, in America, okay, yeah. then the FBI or the CIA discover that they have no records of the bad guy, the big bad guy, yeah. the, the head honcho bad guy. Well, the fact is, all they have to do, right, is come over to this country and ask R Rada or the <laughs> Guildhall School of Music and Drama for the names of all the slightly effeminate but posh-sounding English actors who have passed through during the 70s. Because it's always going to be, isn't it, Terence Stamp or Alan Rickman or Jeremy Irons or somebody like that. <laughs> bit too early for the headlines, don't you think? A little bit, yeah. Yes. So those are my ten most annoying Brilliant. things, OK, about... Um, about, oh, that gave you a shock, didn't it, Sean? <laughs> Did he run? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm all out of breath and everything. He's run, he's run. You're having a nice cup of tea in the <laughs> news centre, and you thought, what's going on there? Hello, Tommy wants me to read the news. <laughs> well, uh, we're having a bit of fun in here this morning, but uh, would you like to read the news? I'm ready to read the news if you'd like me to read the news. All right, is there, is there anything about the Olympic flame in it? Uh, not this time, no. There <laughs> might be in 20 minutes, but not now. Oh, please not. <laughs>